Hello and welcome to an updated herb farming guide for 2022. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. For RuneScape guides, content, and news, be sure to subscribe. There are eight herb patches as of November 2022. Two of these herb patches require quests, being the Trollheim patch requiring the My Arms Big Adventure quest, and the Elf City patch requiring the Plague's End quest. There's a couple of different ways of getting to these patches, but I'm going to be highlighting the fastest methods through audio. The fastest way to get to the Faldor patch is by using the Explorer's Ring Cabbage Port Teleport, which requires the Lumbridge Heart Tasks. The fastest way to get to the Ardoin patch is by using the Manor Farm Teleport, which requires the Ardoin Medium Tasks. The fastest way to get to the Manifest patch is by using the Master Farm Alpha Teleport and otherwise the Ectophile Teleport. The fastest way to get to the Caffrey patch is by using a modified Botanist Mask. That being said, the lodestone isn't that much slower. The fastest way to get to the Algrid patch is by using a Mystical Sand Seed, which you can get by thieving in the Garden of Carried or by buying one on the Grand Exchange. The fastest way to get to the Trollheim patch is by using the Lunar Teleport, which does require a total of 370,000 livid farm points. The fastest way to get to the Elf City patch is by using a Crystal Teleport Seed, which if you don't have one anymore, you're going to need to get one from these guards, then charge it at Eluned and Prith, and then you have 8 charges. If you have level 85 smithing, 4000 harmonic dust, and completed the Eyes of the Glute for request, you can create an attuned crystal teleport seed with unlimited charges. The fastest way of getting to the Wilderness patch is through the Wilderness Sword 1 or better, which requires the Wilderness Easy tasks to be complete. Now there are a bunch of useful items that can increase the amount of herbs you gain from a herb patch, therefore increasing your GP per farm run and farming experience. Out of all of the items listed here, I highly suggest you get the green fingers or at least the base version of it and the magic secateur when doing farm runs you should also be using super compost and the regular not perfect but regular duty farming potion more information about compost will be shared later in this guide there's also a couple of different archaeology relic powers you can use to your advantage when doing herb farm runs the most important one being the farm ecology relic power which makes it so that her patches no longer become diseased, sparing you the time of curing them using a plant cure. Or if you have the Farmer's Catalyst Fragment, you'll also be able to cure your patches by simply wearing it. Now, as of the most recent update, you're able to place even more seeds per her patch, given that you have the Plant Power Upgrade. These upgrades can be obtained by gaining Ecal Crux Favor by simply doing your herb runs and then buying the upgrades from the shop in the Garden of Karid. Now, since herbs have an 80 minute growth time or 60 after the speedy growth upgrade, it can take quite long to gather that Ecal Crux favor. If you want to speed up that process, you can use the Rapid Growth spell or Supreme Leafy Growth Potions from the Play Owned Farm Bean Shop to speed up the process of growing herbs to quickly farm them and increase the amount of favor you can gain per hour. So, how many seeds should you plant and should you use compost? Well, first of all, Yes, you should be using compost. We're going to be talking more about that later. As you can see, the amount of herbs you gain as a minimum increase with the amount of seeds you add to the patch. On the other hand, the more seeds you use, despite getting more herbs in total, you're getting less herbs per seed, which I call the herb per seed ratio. Similarly, the effectiveness of your compost goes down with the more seeds you use as well. Here's a graph visualizing what's going on here. So when do you make a loss and when do you make a profit? Well, if your seed price is higher than your herbs per seed ratio times the sell price of your herbs, you're making a loss. You make a profit if your seed price is lower than the amount of money you make from your herbs per seed ratio times the sell price of your herbs. As an example, let's say your seed costs you 1,000 GP each and your ratio is 1.5. That means that your herbs need to cost at least 1000 GP divided by 1.5 being 666.66 to break even. While that does explain how you should think about your costs and how you're going to be making profit, that doesn't explain how many seeds you should be using. For that, we need to look at a little bit deeper. So there are three different examples on screen. The first is the seed price is equal to the herb price. The second is where the herb price is higher than the seed price and the third is where the herb price is lower than the seed price note herb price 
not the herb revenue. If the seed price is equal to the herb price, 10 seeds is not worth doing over 7 seeds unless you want to gain more farming experience because the net profit is exactly the same. If the seed price is lower than the herb price, the more seeds you use, the more net profit you will be gaining, but the less efficient your profit is compared to your total revenue. In the third table example, the seed price is higher than the herb price and the amount of seeds that are the most efficient depend on the herb revenue which is calculated by grabbing the average herb ratio times the herb price. In this example, while still making profit with 10 seeds, you can clearly see that we're making less profit percentually than with 7 seeds, so we might as well be using 7 seeds to be more efficient to make more money. If we were to drop the herb price down to 3600 GP, suddenly using 4 seeds is more efficient than using 7 or 10 seeds. Let's get to actually doing our farm runs, but before we do you want to go to any farming NPC and store a bunch of super compost or ultra compost depending on what you're using. The reason you want to do this is because you can pay the NPCs to use super compost on the patches for you, making farming herbs much easier. Now, I won't be getting too detailed into actually making compost yourself if you're an Iron Man, but basically you add a bunch of stuff to your compost bin, let that sit, and it will create compost for you to collect using an empty bucket. With that being said, let's finally showcase a herb run example. The first patch I go to is the one south of Falador, which you can get to using the Explorer's Ring 3 teleport. As you can see, I get lucky with my farming skill cape and harvest the rest of the patch. I plant new seeds and then teleport to the Ardoin Lodestone. If you have the Man of Farm teleport, you can teleport straight to the patch. Now, whenever your inventory is full, be sure to go to one of the two leprechauns, right-click them, and choose the Note option. The next patch we're going to is the Canifis patch using the Ectophile teleport, unlock from the Ghost to Hoy quest. Next, I went to the Caverby patch, which you can get to using the Botanist Mask or Caverby Lodestone teleport, but as you can see, for some reason, my herbs here were planted at a different time. Anyways, next up. The Garden of Karid patch, which you can get to using the Mystical Sand Seed Teleport. Next, I go to the Trollheim patch, which I do not have the Olivid Farm Teleport for, so I have to use the regular Spellbook Teleport and walk all the way there, which is a little bit sad. Now, the NPC at this location does not have a note option, so to note the herbs, you're going to need to use the herbs on the Leprechaun to note them. We then go to the Elf City patch using our Crystal Teleport Seed. This is the final patch before we go to the Wilderness patch using our Wilderness Sword Teleport. Now, in the Wilderness patch, all you want to plant are Bloodweeds because this is the only place in the game where you can place Bloodweed Seeds. After finishing up, use the Wilderness Teleport System to get to lower leveled Wilderness and then teleport to the Max Guild PVM Hub or wherever else you want to go. And that's how you do a Herb Run. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide and found it helpful. If you did, please leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.